Friday to you uh, as well, that's right. Um, I just have one thing to mention uh, at the start of the briefing. Um, Secretary Kerry will be discharged from Massachusetts General Hospital this afternoon, and he will return to his home uh, in Boston. That will happen a little bit later today. And uh, on departure, the Secretary will give a brief statement and uh, take a couple of questions. We'll be putting out a notice to the press with some of the details um, for those who will cover. Would that uh, include the time? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, I don't have the time in front of me. It'll be, you know, it won't be in the next hour. It'll be a little bit later in the afternoon. What, when he gets discharged or when you'll put out the details? No, we'll put out the details. Uh, it may even happen while I'm at the podium. Uh, gotcha. Just looking through those uh, particulars. Um, does, when, and, and when you say that he, he will return to his home in Boston, that means in, in the city, right? He's not going out to Cape Cod or Nantucket or wherever. He's going to his, ha his city home. His home in Boston. In the city of in Boston. In Boston. And that means that there's still no... <clears throat> Beyond, beyond that going there, to, he, his schedule is still I think he'll decided. have more to say about it. Uh, he'll this. have more to say about it? Well, I don't know how much detail he'll get into, but uh, you know, he'll okay. speak to that this afternoon. Um, Matt, anything? Uh, um, yeah, well, this just popped up. North Korea has written to the UN Security Council and asked it to open an investigation into what it says um, <clears throat> are uh, the U.S. Uh, targeting it with live anthrax. This clear appears to have come from the Pentagon's admission recently that some samples of live anthrax were mistakenly shipped to a variety of places, including bases in South Korea. Um, <clears throat> one, are you I think aware? A single base in South single Korea. Single base, right? Okay. Oh, um, so you are aware of this? Uh, the well, letter. Well, yes, uh, I can speak. So to okay. Um, so can you answer North Korea? Why are you targeting North Korea with live well, anthrax? <laughs> uh, that's not what's going on. Okay. Um, uh, we we've seen the letter which was submitted by the DPRK to the United Nations. The allegations are ridiculous. Um, they don't merit a response uh, other than to say we have been clear, um, as has the Department of Defense, about the circumstances that led to this inadvertent uh, shipment. I think uh, you know, my, my colleagues across the river have spoken uh, to that in some detail. But to, to the UN thing? Not to the UN no, thing, okay. but to the circumstances so, that, that, that uh, surrounded the shipment. Does, this, uh, does your response suggest that <clears throat> you will be not in, you would, you're not in favor of a Security Council investigation into well, yeah, yeah, again, uh, the, uh, the, the will, allegations are ridiculous. I you will vote no, see. or you will use your veto power I, to I'm prevent not sure, I'm not sure that there's uh, something coming to a vote uh, uh, anyway. Um, again, uh, we've been very clear about uh, the, the circumstances that led to this, okay. um, and uh, any suggestion uh, otherwise uh, is, is baseless. Um, all right, a uh, new topic? <clears throat> oh, can we stay on the uh, secretary? Do you have Please. any um, any uh, phone calls, any conversations that he's had with uh, foreign officials or with uh, members of his team in the past 24 uh, hours? He's been having phone calls with members of his team. I don't have specific uh, uh, ones to recount. Uh, you know, he's been in touch with people by email, by phone. Mm -hmm. I don't have foreign leader uh, calls uh, to to read out. Um, but he's been engaged with his team. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, his chief of staff uh, was up in Boston, um, so they were able to deal with uh, several things, you know, direct face-to-face. -face, uh, and, uh, and, but other than that, I don't have uh, particular <clears throat> details to read out. Do you know whether he's uh, touched base with uh, Undersecretary Sherman as uh, the uh, latest round of talks got underway in Vienna? Uh, I don't know if he's spoken with her in Vienna. He has had uh, a, a couple of conversations with her during the course of this week. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, with her and also at, at least one call that was with the larger uh, Iran team, uh, including Under Secretary Sherman. Mm -hmm. So um, he's remained uh, engaged uh, uh, with, uh, with them, uh, but I don't have uh, specific details from the last 24 hours about a call. And has he been uh, doing any outreach to members of Congress on uh, fast track trade authority? I know that uh, he and uh, Secretary Carter have written about the need for it. Has he been doing any lobbying, as it were, from uh, Boston to uh, particularly members of, uh, of the House who are very split on the issue, it appears? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the Secretary's uh, op-ed with Secretary Carter earlier this week certainly lays out uh, uh, you know, his views, uh, and, and the Secretary has spoken repeatedly. I don't have calls to members of Congress uh, to read out, uh, so uh, I, I don't know for sure if he's made any. Uh, I'm not aware of any. Um, but again, he's been in contact with, with by email, 
uh, with people as well. Um, so, uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't rule out the possibility he's been in touch with them, but you know, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't know exactly whom he's been, you know, in every email <coughs> contact uh, with over the last uh, couple of days. Um, all right, um, go ahead, Samir. There's a report that the head of the Israeli National Security is uh, coming uh, with a delegation on Monday here to discuss the, the developments with the uh, negotiations, the Iran negotiations. Can you confirm that? Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have a, uh, you know, a, announcements about meetings uh, to, to offer. I'd refer you to the, the Israeli authorities for uh, the travel plans um, of their <coughs> officials. Um, I, I simply don't have uh, something in front of me. Now to confirm that, uh, of course, we have remained in touch with uh, Israeli officials uh, throughout the uh, uh, the nuclear talks, um, and you know, that's that's been the case uh, throughout, and and it will it will continue. Um, you know, we've got a close uh, security and uh, you know, bilateral relationship with Israel, uh, including on the Iran uh, talks. So that's uh, that's certainly uh, been uh, the past uh, history, and we'll continue that. We have a close relationship with Israel on a variety of matters, including the Iran talks. Doesn't seem well, very close. We've right been, now. we've, we've like remained in, in here, regular and contact, here. and uh, yeah, but you don't agree. Uh, with them. Excuse me. You don't agree on it, though, right? Well, but uh, we've uh, you know, that, that that doesn't change the fact that we uh, consult uh, closely with them. Can I stay on Israel for a second? Sure, go ahead. Do you uh, you will probably have seen yesterday the Israeli military released its, the uh, results of its investigation into the um, deaths of the uh, four Palestinian children on the beach in Gaza during. In the uh, war last last year, uh, I'm wondering that they uh, the investigation f determined that it was an accident. It was an a accidental, and um, that there is not going to be any uh, there won't be any charges um, brought. Do you have any response to that reaction to that? Well, this was a serious uh, incident, and we are aware of the results. <clears throat> excuse me, of the investigation. We were in close contact with Israel throughout the investigation, and and we uh, we will continue to remain in contact um, to further enhance the protection of, of civilian populations in times of conflict. Um, uh, but I don't have a, a specific comment to offer on the uh, on the, the investigation itself. Can you when you when you say we were in close contact with Israel throughout the investigation? Does that mean you were in contact with them about the investigation? Well, again, the, the, the end of that uh, the end of that sentence. We were, were in contact and remain in contact uh, to enhance the protection of civilian uh, populations uh, in times of conflict. So, um, that's that's the uh, topic of discussion. I don't want to suggest that we were somehow consulting on the uh, on the investigation. Um, but we've, uh, as we said at the time, um, we uh, you know, we uh, of course take uh, issues of protection of civilians. Seriously, it's part of our uh, regular. Uh, uh, well, I understand that, but I mean, are you satisfied? Or, 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 is, the, is the administration satisfied with the with the, with the findings? Again, I'm not going to offer a comment on the on at the, the at the time of the attack. <clears throat> Jen, who was on the podium, because said, said that it was horrifying. She said, uh, <laughs> "Quote the tragic this tragic event makes clear that Israel must take every possible step to meet its standards for protecting civilians from being killed. We will continue to underscore that point to Israel." Um, does that square? I mean, do you think that, uh, that, that, that the finding of this investigation um, addresses your concerns that you, well, raised, that, they, that you raised at the time? Well, we said at the time, and you're right, Jen was at the podium, um, <clears throat> she said at the time that we were heartbroken by the death of innocent uh, civilians, and uh, we stressed throughout the conflict um, that Israel uh, should take every possible step to meet its high standards uh, for protecting civilians from being killed. Um, and, and so we also uh, said at the time, and we uh, continue to stand by our view, that uh, all parties uh, need to, to take uh, and needed to take uh, all feasible precautions right. to prevent civilian casualties. Um, uh, but I'm, I, don't, uh, I don't have a specific comment to, to offer on the, uh, on, on the results of this investigation. Uh, well, okay, I'm not sure then, it, I mean, do you think that Israel is now doing what it, uh, doing everything, it can, recognizing that there isn't currently a co uh, active, uh, you know, incursion into Gaza or whatever? Um, are they doing? Have they addressed your concerns? Well, we remain in in contact with uh, with Israel uh, about these issues. These uh, again, Israel has. Does that uh, mean that your concerns have uh, not? Israel holds its uh, holds itself to high standards. Uh, 
We hold ourselves to high standards when it comes to protecting civilians in conflict. Uh, it's an issue on which we remain in, in contact. Okay. Do you believe that Israel has upheld it, its own high standards? In this case, well, again, you're asking me to comment on the on the outcome of the report, which uh, yeah, I said mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to offer. A you comment on the outcome of lots of reports, though. Lots of you comment on the outcomes of you know verdicts and trials and all that kind of thing. I'm just curious as to whether you. I mean, it's very possible that the U.S. government thinks that this was a this investigation was was perfectly adequate and 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 covered all the bases. But it's uh, you know, given the harsh criticism at the administration leveled at Israel during the conflict, and this wasn't the only incident, there was the the the, the school incident as well, which uh, <coughs> which which you guys criticized pretty heavily. Um, I mean, I, I just you well, you, is, you is raise these things, but then you don't follow, that but then once an investigation is done, you can't say whether yes, we support, we think that the the investigation that Israel did was uh, adequate and, and, and good and answers the questions and concerns that we raised at the time? And you can't say that? Well, look, Israel is a vibrant democracy. It has robust democratic institutions. Um, but I'm not going to comment uh, on, uh, right. on the specific uh, findings uh, of, this, of this report. Um, uh, to gender. India? Yes. Uh, this, is this department looking at uh, India's operations inside Myanmar uh, to flesh out ter terrorists. And there was a subsequent uh, uh, response from a rattled Pakistan. You know, you know that these nuclear powered uh, neighbors have fought three wars. And yesterday, the Indian Army says on Thursday, there was an exchange of fire in the Punj sector of Kashmir. So uh, are you concerned? What is your reaction to what's going on there? Well, the relationship between India and Pakistan is critical to advancing peace and stability in South Asia. So we welcome uh, any steps India and Pakistan can take to reduce tensions and move toward resuming, uh, resuming dialogue. Um, you know, we encourage India and Pakistan uh, to take uh, those kinds of steps. Uh, and, uh, and we believe that India and Pakistan each have a mutual interest in, in uh, you know, addressing the threat posed by violent extremism and uh, terrorism. So, so do you support what India did in Myanmar, going in and taking out the terrorists? We have done that, sir. Um, well, I, I don't. Uh, I don't have a comment on that specific uh, operation. I, I think you know the the uh, the point uh, that that you raised and to, to which uh, responded is we we encourage India and Pakistan uh, to take steps to reduce tensions uh, and to move towards uh, resuming uh, resuming talks. Uh, has the U.S. reached out officially to India or Pakistan to defuse the tension that are really rising at this moment? Well, we've we've encouraged a reduction uh, of tensions on both sides um, uh, at high levels. Um, so that's it is something we've uh, uh, we've mentioned. Um, back, yes. I just want to further to your uh, the, the statement that was put out about the Save the Children raid. Yes. Um, is this the extent of uh, your your communication with the Pakistani government about your your concerns over this raid, or do you know? Can you say if this has been raised, um, you know, in Islamabad or here with Pakistani officials? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't have details uh, about uh, whether it's it's been discussed uh, in in Islamabad, um, but it's certainly uh, a, a a matter of, of concern uh, to us. Um, you know, Save the Children is an international uh, non-government organization. Uh, they do they do important work, um, so that's the uh, of course the reason uh, for our statement. Syria, Syria, yes. Uh, a Turkish official speaking to Reuters on Tel Abyad clashes in Syria said yesterday that a significant demographic change is taking place in the area. Arabs are being pushed away as Kurds flow in, he said. Um, do you think Kurds are taking advantage of the situation to change demographics since you support Kurds from the area? Well, the, uh, you know, there are reports. We are aware uh, of those reports and we're concerned by them uh, and we're seeking more, uh, more information uh, about them. I'm not in a position to confirm the details uh, of of those uh, assertions, uh, but but certainly you know we've uh, you know, we're aware of this and we're uh, we're trying to obtain more information uh, about what's happening uh, on on the ground, um, and you know we have raised um, with the uh, uh, the PYD uh, our concerns uh, about uh, their human rights record, uh, including uh, intimidation of rival uh, Kurdish political parties in the past. Um, so. 
uh, those are uh, concerns we've raised. But you know, you also uh, you know you you uh, you mentioned um, you know, the uh, U.S. Uh, Airstrikes uh, and uh, our support; those that has been, uh, you know, our airstrikes are focused uh, on the fight against ISIL uh, and not uh, not to any other uh, purpose. Uh, so I want to make that uh, that aspect of it uh, uh, quite clear as well. Can you explain more what you mean by you are these passive innovations? Well, uh, you know, we've uh, we've we've raised concerns. There have been reports in the past uh, about it, uh, and we've raised uh, our concerns with them uh, in the past about uh, about these reports. Um, but it seems to me PYD is the most inclusive kind of um, entity within Syria, where you have Christians, non-Kurds, like all sorts of parties represented in the cantons they have established. Well, uh, again, uh, there have been there have been reports uh, in the past, uh, uh, and uh, and we've raised those uh, with them. Um, so uh, I'm not going to comment on it, you know, or compare it to, to any other uh, organization uh, in inside Syria. Yes. Through which channel do you raise these concerns? Well, as we've said in the past, we have uh, we have had uh, contact uh, with them. I'm not going to specify uh, the the channel, but uh, we have had both direct and indirect uh, contacts. Uh, what in reports are you referring to? Uh, you said there are reports. Well, of... there have been reports in the past. I'm not not as the department to... reports. No, 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 no. I mean okay. uh, reports, uh, public reports in the media, in the media. And, okay. uh, and of that uh, of that sort. Um, Nicola, can we go back to the Iran talks for a minute? Sure. Uh, I just would like to have your take on. Uh, some Russian officials who are quoted as saying from Vienna and from Moscow that they are extreme, extremely concerned because the talks are uh, slowing down and, and even uh, have stalled. I'd like to have your, your opinion on that. Uh, well, uh, you know, our undersecretary, uh, Wendy Sherman, is in Vienna uh, meeting with her uh, political director uh, colleagues as part of the P5 plus one. Uh, talks. We remain of the view that um, it's possible to reach uh, to conclude uh, the talks by by June thirtieth. That remains uh, our uh, our focus, um, and uh, and so uh, I, I don't. Uh, you know, but do you agree with that assessment? By well, mean, the, the Russians, said... the Russians don't usually speak out like this. Um, you know, there's, the, the assessment is that these discussions have now virtually stalled. Well, we've uh, we've said all along that we're not going to negotiate in public, and uh, you know, the, uh, the the details. I think, as we talked about uh, yesterday, in a slightly different context, but the details uh, in the negotiating room um, you know, uh, should stay in the negotiating room. Uh, so, I'm not going to characterize um, the uh, uh, the current state uh, of the talks. Uh, again, we remain of the view that the the uh, the June the June thirtieth uh, is is achievable, uh, and that's our focus. To uh, to reach a joint comprehensive uh, plan of action, uh, but by then. even even without uh, giving giving us any detail about the, the content of the talks, could you say that that the talks are going well or are, di are difficult or? Well, I I wouldn't put a label on it of that sort. Of course, you know, the uh, you know there these are complicated uh, talks um, and uh, and there are complicated issues that we have to work through uh, at this stage. Uh, I think uh, you know, the the U.S. has not made any secret of that, uh, and uh, but we uh, it is still our belief that we can uh, we can reach a conclusion uh, of of the I talks by the, the deadline. Go ahead, Matt. Does your willingness to even characterize the uh, you know where where the talks are and that they're a diff difficult phase with two and a half weeks left? Does that extend to um, uh, not not commenting on? The various reports that have come out this week and last about um, concessions that the P5 plus one appear to be making to Iran in terms of both sanctions relief and on the PMD issue. Oh, well, uh, I think uh, we we spoke a, a bit to this uh, yesterday, but on the PMD issue, you know, we're uh, we, we've seen uh, we've seen reports that uh, I think that you're referring to. You know, I think our position on this uh, hasn't uh, hasn't changed. We've always made clear. To the Iranians, that they will have to reach uh, agreement with the IAEA on providing the necessary access to address the concerns uh, about the possible military dimensions of their program, um, and without that agreement, uh, you know, we will not be able to move forward uh, with sanctions relief. Uh, that's been our position uh, throughout uh, these these negotiations. Right, but that means that that suggests that the actual questions don't have to be answered and res and and the concerns resolved in order to get the deal, correct? Well, uh, again, they only the have point... to agree to, at some point, uh, 
whatever that might be, but at some point after an agreement is reached to uh, to deal with this. Is that correct? Well, the point is that uh, Iran has to provide the necessary access to the IAEA for them to uh, for them to address uh, these uh, these concerns. Um, yeah, but does that have to happen in, to get to a deal, or can that happen after a deal? Well, without 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 agreement um, on the access, uh, we will not and needed to resolve this. We won't be able to reach. Uh, you know, to, 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 to so an agree. So if Iran agrees to give access to the sites that the IAEA wants, but doesn't actually, but hasn't actually given the access by June 30th, that's still okay. Well, Is that correct? there I think we're getting into details that uh, I will leave in the negotiating room. I think I'm, uh, what I'm trying to convey though is that our, uh, our position uh, on, uh, on the, uh, the possible military dimensions uh, issue uh, and the necessity of Iran uh, working with the IAEA, uh, that position uh, remains the same. It but hasn't changed. It, is, it, or is it correct that there is a difference between me, if I'm Iran, saying to you, okay, <clears throat> you can have access in 50 years, and me as Iran saying, okay, come on in now and give uh, and 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 ask all the questions you want and will will uh, will address your concerns. There's a difference between those two, correct? It, but the distinction you're trying to say is 50 years versus. Uh, well, zero, I mean, uh, it, when when does Iran is, have to give the access? Well, again, that, those are those are details uh, that. Uh, well, they that shouldn't are be. In, in, they shouldn't. In, in, in I didn't. Negotiating room, and I'm not going to speak to those. Uh, well, those but they shouldn't be up for negotiation because the whole idea in the JPOA was that Iran would resolve these issues in order to get to the JP in order to get to a comprehensive deal. And now you're saying they don't have to resolve them at all. All they have to do is say, okay, at some point in the future, and we don't know when that might be, that, that we'll give access. No, it, and giving access doesn't mean that, you're, that the IAEA or yours, your concerns, have been resolved or addressed. Our, our position on this hasn't changed, uh, Matt. And you can go back and look at what we've uh, what we said uh, at, at the time. But uh, our position remains that you know, it's about uh, the access that the IAEA needs uh, to address uh, our concerns. And no, that's, but that's, that's not our... what it was at the beginning. At the beginning of this, it was they have to resolve the PMD issue to the satisfaction of the IAEA, or there isn't going to be a deal. Again, I'm saying there's not a there's not a there's not a. Well, that's a big difference between that and saying that. They just have to agree to, at some point down the road, give access and not even resolve the concerns. Again, the, uh, there, you know, the, there is the a difference between there. I mean, well, am I wrong? Look, uh, the, the, the focus is on addressing uh, addressing these concerns, um, and that's uh, one of the issues that we're dealing with uh, but, in the negotiating room. So, would the IAEA um, first have to resolve this? Well, would, would the the discuss would the the deal have to? Um, include that the IAEA has resolved this already before you sign it. I mean, because if, if you sign the deal without that being resolved, isn't just something left open? Well, again, uh, I go back to what I what I said initially in response uh, to Matt's question. You know, that it is it has consistently been uh, our our position that Iran has to reach agreement with the IAEA to provide uh, the necessary access. To address the concerns about the possible military dimensions uh, of their program, that's uh, that's been our position throughout the negotiations. And without that agreement, um, you know, we'll not be able to move uh, forward with uh, with sanctions relief. Uh, and you know, the, the 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 discussions in the room, I'll leave in the room. Um, but that's been our position, um, and uh, and that's uh, uh, and it remains. So it has never been the U.S. position that Iran must resolve the PMD concerns to get to an agreement. That's never been a that's never been a condition. Look, if we want to go back and uh, and and look at what was said at the time again, our position uh, on this. I uh, wish this wasn't. I mean, I, <laughs> remains. The same. I mean, um, it I doesn't remain saying. the same, Jeff. You, it's 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 changed. I mean, Secretary Kerry even said that it had they had to be resolved um, in order for there to be a deal. Uh, you're trying to draw, to draw a distinction between the words address and re and resolve. And no, I I, you're lowering it. You're lowering the bar even further from address to just agree to give access to, which means, I mean, if, if, if they give no, access, the address, Matt. if they, so, if, if they give access and the IAEA, your, your version now says that if they give access, the IAEA goes in and finds some huge secret bomb making thing 
that's okay. That you then they've they've given access, no, Matt, and that's, that's all right. I, I think you were listening to what I said, but I, I said was. that that, it, that yeah. Iran has to provide the necessary access to address the concerns about the possible military dimensions. But what of, if the concerns program. aren't addressed? What if the access that they give doesn't address the concerns? You've already got the deal. They're already getting sanctions relief. Or are you saying that if the concerns aren't addressed at some point down the road, then they're not going to get the sanctions relief that they would have gotten I've, for that? I've laid out part our position that clearly, Matt, it hasn't changed. Um, All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very ahead. confused uh, because it does seem that the, the, the goalposts seem to be moving. No, the goalposts haven't moved. Mm -hmm. All uh, right. Iran, again, uh, the leader of one of the Kurdish uh, parties of Iran, Mustafa Hijri, the Kurdistan Democratic Party, he's in town in Washington for several weeks. So he's been trying to reach you guys at the State Department and the Pentagon, anyone in the administration, nobody wants to talk to them. And his assessment is, he talked to me that uh, is because of the nuclear deal, you don't want to talk to the, any oppositions to, you know, to uh, scare Iranian. Uh, what's your response for that? I'm not aware of, uh, of a visit of, of this delegation, so I don't have a response uh, to that uh, uh, to that allegation. But um, you ready to talk to the people? Look, I'm not going to make commitments here to meetings at the podium, um, so uh, I'm not aware of the uh, of the visit you're referring to. So I don't have a comment uh, on it. Go ahead, David. Do you have a readout of the meeting between uh, General Fan and uh, Deputy Secretary Blinken? Yes, um, yes, I do. Um, Deputy Secretary Blinken met uh, today with Chinese Vice Chairman of the Central Military Commission, General Fan Changwang, um, and they discussed U.S.-China relations, including upcoming bilateral engagements, um, in, per in particular the, the, the strategic security dialogue um, for which Deputy Secretary Blinken um, is, the, is the U.S. lead. Um, this visit was in keeping with our efforts to maintain regular um, senior level communication between our two governments. Uh, 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 and uh, General Fan uh, had some meetings, uh, I believe, uh, at uh, at the Pentagon as well as uh, over at the White House, uh, and I think they've put out readouts of those uh, of those discussions as well. Was land reclamation discussed? Uh, I don't have further details to share from uh, from the meetings, um, uh, so uh, I'll leave it uh, leave it at that. Uh, to gender. Let's go back to the Matt's question about the Pakistan. There's mm -hmm. a you know in the statement you are criticizing Pakistan, and then you're saying that we share the government of Pakistan's goal of promoting a blah, blah, blah. And the, what, the, the whole thing is a little bit of criticism, but what are you doing? Are you stopping any aid? Are you, there's, any, any, there's no teeth in this uh, statement, it's just words, I feel. What do you say to that? Like? Well, uh, I think the statement is pretty, is pretty clear about, uh, about our concerns uh, and why we consider the, the work of of Save the Children and other international charitable organizations to be important. Um, and I think you know, the statement uh, also uh, makes, uh, makes a connection that the, the government of Pakistan itself has, uh, has a goal of, of promoting economic uh, development um, and, uh, and democracy uh, and, and security. And uh, it, it, uh, the statement uh, you know, it makes clear that, that our, our support for Pakistan's uh, goals uh, involves, uh, in, in many instances, working through international non-governmental organizations uh, who implement uh, projects in a variety of sectors. So um, you know, I think uh, that, uh, that, that that's clear in the statement. Yeah, and going back to a few weeks, months ago, the India had done some things with this NGOs, uh, you know, blacklisting them and all. And this, from this podium, I was told that, yes, we are reaching out to... Uh, did anything happen on that or it just got, bur you know, buried? Did you get any reply? Did this get any kind of solution to what India has been doing? I don't have an update uh, to uh, offer uh, on it. Again, we expressed uh, our concerns and we've raised those uh, with the Indian authorities. I don't yeah. have an update to, uh, to offer uh, here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, 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 I want to go back to Iran and this whole PMD thing. All right, in April, the Secretary was on PBS NewsHour with Judy Woodruff and she asked him, the IAEA has said for a long time that it wants Iran to disclose past PMD. Iran is increasingly looking like it's not prepared to do this. Is the U.S. prepared to accept that? Secretary Kerry, no, they have to do it. It will be done. If there's going to be a deal, it will be done. Woodruff, because it's not there right now. Kerry, it will be done. Woodruff. So that information will be released before June 30th. It will be available. Secretary Kerry, it will be part of, the final, of a final agreement. It has to be. Now you're saying that all they have to do is to agree to provide access at some date in the future 
to a, to 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 address them. That certainly is that's no, a, that's a, that's a walk back. No, uh, am I, position, am I completely remains, misunderstanding what the remains, secretary said? As Secretary said. Kerry uh, uh, outlined it, um, that uh, and you know as you as you quoted uh, from the secretary's, uh, he said there in response to a question, does Iran have to disclose its PMDs? In other words, do they have to address mm -hmm. the address the concerns or resolve the concerns? And he said yes before June thirtieth. Was he wrong? He said yes. That's part that that would have to be part of the part of the deal. And, and now you're saying it doesn't no, have to be part no, of the I'm deal. No, I'm not saying it's part of the deal, Matt. Uh, you're trying to draw distinctions here where where there aren't uh, distinctions. Uh, what Secretary Kerry said in that in that there interview is, is consistent with. Uh, with our policy, are, uh, there is no distinction been. between them having to open up and, and, no, and, and so address. No, you're, 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 you're offering uh, your interpretation of what these words might mean. What the secretary said uh, in that interview, what I've said, uh, and what our position has been throughout these talks, is is entirely consistent. Go ahead, well, Samir. Any reaction to the deadly attack against members of the Druze community in uh, Syria? Um, we condemn the uh, Nusra Front's uh, attack uh, on June 10th against the Druze village uh, in, in Idlib, where reportedly uh, 20 people were killed. Uh, and contrary to, uh, to Nusra leader Jalani's recent claim uh, that Nusra would not harm uh, religious uh, minorities, uh, this terrorist group uh, has shown once again uh, that it continues to commit a range of crimes against the Syrian people. And, uh, and, is, and it's at odds with the Syrians' desire for, uh, for a safe uh, and, and prosperous Syria. Go ahead. Uh, on the, uh, um, like the consideration of uh, adding more bases and troops to Iraq, so if this um, uh, becomes a reality and uh, you'll reoccupy the bases that you used to. Wait, wait, wait. I think, I think it's important to, to, to make clear here that you know, there is no contemplation of U.S. Uh, bases. The U.S train and advise and assist program uh, in support of the Iraqi uh, government and the Iraqi security forces are located on Iraqi bases, um, where we have a presence that uh, you know, is necessary to carry out that mission. But these are Iraqi bases. Yeah. But didn't uh, General Dempsey said that uh, th th those bases will be used by the United States? He called them the lily pad bases? Huh? Well, I think what uh, you know, what the, the chairman said is consistent with the, the strategy the president has laid out, uh, and, and that strategy is, if there's a request from the Iraqi, if there's a request from the Iraqi government, and the president's military advisors recommend uh, you know, additional venues to further train, advise, uh, uh, to further the train, advise, and assist mission. Then, uh, then the U.S. government would consider that, uh, and and I think that's uh, uh, that's okay. been that's been clear. So while we're seeing this kind of incremental increase in the number of troops and bases in Iraq well, that are being again, used, but, uh, no, no, uh, again, uh, you're, you're you're using this word bases, and I want to be really clear about about that word because what we're talking about uh, are is U.S. support at Iraqi bases, okay, uh, where Iraqi we are bases. where we are carrying out a training but you're using this them. mission. Well, but not exclusively. For example, uh, at uh, at Takadam, uh, where uh, where the 450 or so uh, additional U.S. personnel uh, will be located, that is the Iraqi uh, operations headquarters. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, these are these are in no way U.S. bases. These are Iraqi bases where the U.S. is carrying out um, our mission to support. Um, the Iraqi security forces. Okay, well, with this gradual increase in the number of troops, why shouldn't Americans or uh, Iraqis be worried that uh, the United States will actually commit itself to a long war, slide itself into a long and bloody war that it used to fight for like eight years? Well, uh, the mission, uh, I think, is, is quite clear. Uh, we are, on the one hand, um, carrying out uh, airstrikes in support of Iraqi uh, security forces, forces under Iraqi command and control to push ISIS uh, out of Iraq. Uh, and on the other hand, we have a train, advise, and assist mission which is in support of uh, Prime Minister Abadi and the Iraqi uh, security forces, um, and uh, and that is uh, that is our mission. Uh, that that mission is not changing. You know the ways in which we're uh, carrying out that mission, uh, you know, have just been uh, you, know, uh, you know revised uh, to include additional uh, personnel carrying out the train, advise, and assist mission. Um, but uh, okay. you're, you're 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 presupposing uh, a completely different mission, and that's not the mission that the United States has in Iraq. And you're saying this is not a change in strategy. This is just 
completing no, this? As I think people have, as I think uh, you know, several U.S. government officials have said uh, in the in the course of this week, you know, the uh, you know the strategy uh, remains the same. Of course, we're always looking at ways to better execute uh, the strategy. And in response to a very specific request from Prime Minister Abadi for additional support in advising uh, and assisting uh, Iraqi security forces uh, and supporting their integration with the Sunni uh, militias in Anbar, the United States has decided uh, to commit additional personnel to that effort. Um, so, but I think that's, uh, just, that's been quite clear. Just one more. Will any of these new troops go to Kurdistan or just to this? Uh uh, center of Iraq. Well, we have existing uh, efforts uh, in in Kurdistan at the joint uh, at the joint operations center, um, where they work closely with the, their Kurdish uh, colleagues. The new forces. And, uh, the new and so, uh, so the new, but the the additional forces uh, are focused on the Takadam uh, base. Uh, my colleagues from the Department of Defense have uh, have offered more detail uh, about uh, about that. But uh, you know. I don't want to. Uh, I don't. I take a certain uh, <coughs> suggestion from your question that we're not doing uh, things with Kurdish forces, and nothing could be further from the truth. Our our partnership uh, in in the uh, Kurdistan region with the Kurdish forces has been an important part from the very start of our trade advise and assist mission, and that continues. Thank you. Uh, uh, just one, Matt. You you have. I was going to say thank you. Have a good weekend. But. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, we'll do two quick ones, and then and then we'll go. We'll start with Mary Alice, who has not asked a question yet today. That's right. Um, U.S. military, military, uh, U.S. and Russia military maneuvers over the Baltics. Just a quick question here. Um, there are reports now that a Russian fighter jet flew within ten feet of an Air, um, Air Force reconnaissance aircraft uh, on May 30th over the Baltic Sea. Has there been any diplomatic discussion about these encounters, which seem to be increasing in frequency and in proximity? Well, I would I would refer you first and foremost to my colleagues at the Pentagon um, for the details uh, of the incident um, and uh, and and how uh, how they have addressed them. Um, you know, there have uh, when when we have seen unsafe incidents. Uh, we we have uh, we have raised them, um, uh, but I'll I'll let my uh, my colleagues uh, from the Pentagon speak to uh, speak to that. Uh, so diplomatically, you have you have dis have you just through diplomatic channels have you had a discussion with Russia about these kinds of encounters that seem to be happening more often over the Baltics? Again, I'm not going to get into more detail about the channels through which these contacts okay. occur, but uh, but certainly when uh, when there are unsafe uh, incidents, uh, we we certainly uh, certainly address them. Um, uh, go ahead to gender. A quick one on um, the Swiss authorities are doing all this uh, investigation, and how how far the U.S. is involved in it? The Iran negotiations, you know, those computers they see in the, all the investigation. Mm -hmm. Is the U.S. part of the investigation, or you're letting the Swiss do it? I'd refer you to the Swiss authorities for details of a Swiss uh, investigation. Uh, On one. Iraq. Uh, President Obama, uh, in a G7 meeting summit, he was uh, criticizing the Iraqi government by not committed to all of, like he said, we don't have a complete strategy because of the lack of the commitments by the other side, which he was referring to the Iraqi government. And yesterday I had uh, I uh, had an interview with the Salim al Jabouri, speaker of the Iraqi parliament. He was also criticizing the United States, not a, uh, exactly United States, but the coalition that the, the slow procedure of arming and equipping the Iraqi forces and the, uh, the Shia militias and the, also the Sunni uh, tribes. So in, what are these commitments the United States wants to the Iraqi government uh, to make in order to make the strategy to complete? Well, I think Prime Minister Abadi uh, and his, his Council of Ministers have, uh, have a five-point strategy that they approved back on May 19th. Um, and that uh, includes, among other things, uh, increasing recruitment into the Iraqi armed forces, um, expediting the, uh, the training and equipping of Sunni uh, militias, and a number of other steps, uh, and and we support that uh, that five point plan. That uh, that's uh, that's the Iraqi government's plan. It's Prime Minister Abadi's plan, and and so we're uh, we're working uh, to support it, uh, including by expanding our uh, train, advise, and assist mission to the Takadam uh, base. Uh, and uh, so that's the way we see that we can best support uh, Iraq's goals. That's what we've uh, talked about quite extensively with Prime Minister Abadi. Uh, he was here in Washington just uh, just last month, no, two months ago. 
and and he and President Obama met uh, uh, during the G7 uh, as well. So you know we are we are committed to uh, to doing uh, to doing our part. Iraq has set uh, goals for itself, uh, and you can look at their five point plan for for more details on that. Uh, and the specific steps that uh, that Iraqi authorities will take. To, to, to your knowledge, to, uh, to your knowledge, how much of these uh, five point plans been uh, implemented? Well, I, I'd, I'd refer you back because, to the because President Obama was criticizing uh, that. For, That's not a complete. Um, no, I, again, the the Iraqi government has a plan. We're supporting uh, that plan, um, and we'll let them uh, speak to the steps they've taken. To okay, thank Thanks very much. Thank you.